ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to updata services limited q1 fy25 earnings conference call this conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on beliefs opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call these statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involves risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes should you need an assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr ragunandan sangarala md and chairman thank you and over to you sir thank you Uh, good afternoon, all of you, and a warm welcome to everyone. To everyone present on this call, along with me, I have uh, Radha, who is the Chief uh, Financial Officer, and Amitabh Jaipuria, who is our Executive Director, and SBA, our Investor Relations Advisor. Hope you all have received the investor deck. Uh, for those of you who have not got it, I mean, you don't have it, can view them on our uh, stock exchange website, on the company website. On the business front, uh, I will keep it brief, and uh, I will uh, quickly give you in a nutshell what has happened the last one quarter. Uh, we've had some challenging times, uh, despite that, uh, we have the company has grown reasonably as per whatever we have guided across both the segments, so the IFM segment and the BSF segment. Uh, our commitment to exceptional service has always allowed us to diversify and enhance our offering. meeting the evolving needs of our clients across various sectors we are dedicated to the press uh, surpassing our customers goals driving excellence in every endeavor and solidify our role as a trusted partner in in their success we operate uh, b2b services uh, we operate in the b2b services space which can be classified into two major segments which you all know is the ifm segment and the bsf segment which is the business support services During Q1 25, as I verified, our ISM segment contributed 64% to the overall revenue, and the balance 36% has come from the BSF segment. Uh, we offer uh, in the ISM segment like auxiliary services, technical services, housekeeping and cleaning services, pest control, production support, and other support services. And in the industrial space, uh, we uh, do the production support services, warehouse management, and other support services. Our key focus in that ISM segment is for us to improve operational efficiency. Like we guided uh, the last quarter, uh, over the last three quarters, we have exited almost all the not very viable business. And going forward, uh, I think we have uh, kind of a clean slate. I think with this uh, quarter, all that uh, is over. So the growth would look uh, definitely better going forward from this quarter. Um, due to good um, changes, we have started to witness improvement in our operating uh, in our operating margin. Last quarter is 5.7 percent, which stood at 4.6 during first quarter of last year. The outsourced market for the iPhone segment is currently about 40,000 crores, and is expected to reach 80,000 crores by FY28. This is a target of approximately 17%. As of 24, 39% of our ISM segment is outsourced and 60% is in-house, which is expected to shift to 45% over the next two years. India's manufacturing PMI is highest in the world and has the potential to reach 1 trillion by 2025. The industry is shifting towards fully integrated assembly management with a higher demand for solution-based offerings. We have distinguished ourselves by providing a comprehensive range of services with specialized technical capabilities, and our commitment to quality and quick turnaround solutions ensures our growth. We aim to gain more market share, focusing on the hard services due to a margin accretion position and specialized nature. Companies are increasingly outsourcing facilities management to leverage expertise, cost efficiencies, and reduce attrition. Allowing them to focus on their core functions and benefit from advanced technologies. This strategy just offers a flexible and scalable solution for large corporations. 
we are confident our growth will stabilize at three times the uh, national uh, nominal GDP. Our flagship BSS segment witnessed a robust revenue growth of 34%. We are witnessing a strong shift of client preference towards outsourcing and solution based offering. We are also witnessing strong traction in sales enablement and audit and assurance sector, which uh, two of our group companies are, uh, I mean, delivering these services. The market market server solution segment witnessed substantial growth in Q1. We continue to witness growth in the SS segment despite the muted performance of EDBC business. We are slowly, uh, EDBC deploy background verification, which is one of the business lines. We are slowly reducing our reliance on IT and IT research companies in employ background verification. Business and slowly diversifying our revenue pool and revenue coming from other sectors such as DSSI and retail. With strong government push for boosting employment and large buildup of global cap uh, capacity centers or capability centers, we are confident in the sustaining a strong growth trajectory going forward. To our group company, Avon, we have forayed into uh, logistics, niche logistics and transport services, along with mailroom logistics. Uh, Avon is currently on a re uh, revenue run rate of get on a 100 crore very shortly. Unis has always been highly focused on technology, uh, on technology-driven innovation and integration of technology in our businesses. We have started to implement AI in our sales enablement business. And we've also done technology in the, in the audit and assurance and the employee background verification business. Implementing of technology is helping us become more efficient, which in turn are uh, which in turn is increasing our business a beta margin. We stood at 9.9% as compared to 9% over last quarter. I'm also pleased to share that our Q124 airport ground landing business has turned around uh, a beta positive and back positive which is in line with our previous commentary. We are addressing in major emerging airports, uh, such as uh, Pune, Tirupati, Ayodhya, etc., which are expected to receive large amounts of traffic and now operate in a total of 22 airports. Apart from ground handling aviation, uh, we have also global also started an aviation training academy. To pick up uh, base and is expected to start positive contributions by next year. During Q125, the DSS segment contributed 36% to revenue and contributed 49% to a beta. Uh, a beta for BSS segment grew by 49% on our year on year basis. A beta margin for BSS segment stood at 9.9%. As of June 30, 24, we have about 900 clients under DSS segment. Key clients under DSS services include uh, customers like uh, Microsoft, PCS, PNG, Hershey. Aditya Birla, Spicenet, and Tata Communications. While revenue from top 10 customers keep growing, we are also expanding with them in different geographies. 77% of our revenue came from our top 50 customers. We continue to be go-to partner for several clients. We continue to be the go-to partner for several clients. Sales enabled audit assurance and EDDC. We are planning a uh, strategic acquisition in the PSC space that will enhance the capabilities of UDS as a whole and be marginal greater in nature. Additionally, we are also boosting cross sales between ISM and the PSC segments, opening up significant growth opportunities and unlocking further synergies. We expect to achieve a 20% organic growth in the PSC segment, which, are, uh, which will further improve our margin. Our ability to successfully acquire and seamlessly integrate our margin aggregator business is a key differentiator for us. All of our profitable basis business stem from acquisition we have effectively integrated. The largest opportunity within the market will be in sales enablement, audit and assurance, and employee background verification. All of which will will none of which are asset light and with capital efficiency in nature. To summarize, UDA is well positioned to grow given the robust industry dynamics and our proven ability to manage large contracts. The government's strong push towards employment generation offering incentives for both white collar and blue collar creates an attractive opportunity for us. 
We have to leverage this favorable conditions to drive our growth. Our strategic focus remains on achieving a growth rate of three times the nominal GDP of the country, while maintaining a high emphasis on capital efficiency and profitability. Our expertise in handling complex and large-scale contracts has uh, set us apart, and we are committed to expanding our market share by delivering exceptional value and services to our customers. Looking forward, we are excited about the potential to capitalize on these industry trends and the government incentives, ensuring sustainable and profitable growth for India going forward. With this, I would like to hand over to our CFO, Radha Ramanujan, for uh, your few one scenario. Over to you, Radha. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'll uh, share the DQ1 FI25 financial highlights. Our revenue growth by 3% year on year to 6,587 million. The ISM segment revenue grew by 5% year on year to 4,000 to 46 million. And VSC segment revenue grew by 34% year on year to 2,340 million. The revenue split between ISM and VSC to the 6436 compared to 7030, same same last year. Quarter on quarter, we are growing the share of VSC segment. EBITDA for Q1 FI25 grew by 33% to 474 million. Uh, EBITDA margins to the 7.2%, solid 1% increment over Q1 FI24, which is 6.1%. At close to 4 percent, witnessed the growth of 107 persons and stood at 256 million. Our tax profit also grew by 22 percent year on year to 382 million. Our IOC again went up by 4 percent, subtracting half to the mixture at 34.2 percent. UDS is a net cash company, and our net debt to equity is negative 0.28, as on 3824. A total headcount in ISM segments to the 551,738 employees and BSC segments to the 3,360 employees. And during Q125, we added 29 logos, new logos in the ISM segment and 15 new logos in the BSC segment. Uh, with this, I open the floor for question and answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants present on the audio bridge who wish to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. We have a first question from the line of Sanjay Shah from KSA Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, gentlemen, and thanks for the opportunity. So, congrats on a great set of numbers. So, my, my question was regarding our BSS, where uh, all our three verticals like Athena, Dena, Matrix, all have really done good and improving. So how do you see that uh, vertical panning ahead from this level? Since our contribution from BSS is around 40 or slightly less than 40 percent. So what what's the target for next one to two years we can reach in this BSS? And and what are the opportunities you see on uh, 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 where uh, we can add, uh, can we add any new services to our offerings by way of some acquisitions and how the strategy work out? Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so thanks for that question. Uh, and uh, see, when we, uh, when we actually went to market uh, and even subsequently in our quarterly call, uh, we have been talking about a clear strategic direction that DSS will continue to grow uh, and DSS share uh, of our total revenue uh, will also grow, but not very fast because even ISM is, is growing. So, uh, it, so right now, uh, our projection uh, could be that uh, the revenue mix, for example, is, uh, uh, is uh, 64 and 36. So this 36 percent revenue split could actually go up to about 40, 42 uh, percent in the next year, year and a half, two years. 
so year on year, maybe it will probably improve by about two percent or there about two to three percent uh, is what we believe. Uh, margins, as you can see, uh, are also looking good, and uh, there is a strong margin growth uh, as well, uh, also in terms of the percentage margin growth. <coughs> Your question about new service lines being added, see, we are always on the lookout to add new service lines. But uh, we have a very clear idea that we will add synergistic lines, um, which, you know, which we understand and which we can, uh, there we know either the customer or the product or the service delivery mechanism uh, and where the inventors are clearly agreed on. We may make uh, some acquisitions uh, within the BSS space on the technology side, but those will be more in terms of enablement. Uh, to enable uh, to make our functions, our products uh, more uh, you know, more efficient, and to improve internal productivity. So service lines, customer facing service lines, we are evaluating right now. We do not have any identified target. Right, sir. Uh, sir, in BSS, uh, our sales enablement services uh, contribute around 70, 71 percent of our revenue in BSS. And all yeah. other are also very exciting, like audit and insurance, employee, mail room, airport ground handling. So, so now how do you see that vertical growing planning ahead? Because we, we see a lot of unorganized player in this segment, correct me if I'm wrong. And, and do we see any green shoots on that side where we can grow? So uh, on the sales enablement side, we are very bullish. Um, and um, uh, not only India, but uh, we have global customers, as you know. We also have a global delivery center in Malaysia, and uh, we have also been expanding to Korea uh, and to some of the other markets. So, but that's a global play uh, that we have, and we are very excited about it. Uh, we are also trying to experiment with newer technologies in these areas to improve our productivity and efficiency. Um, as far as the uh, unorganized sector is concerned, in sales enablement, that's not a very large threat. The threat does come in employee background verification. Uh, where there are some unorganized players, but even there, there are the top five, six players are quite large. And uh, we are amongst the top three players in any case. So uh, uh, it's not really that much the unorganized sector. The EBGC business has been under threat uh, for the past few quarters. That is basically because, as we had already commented earlier, the uh, EBGC business is very closely linked to hiring and IT hiring in particular. And we all know the IT hiring story. Uh, in the last few quarters, where uh, it has always been, uh, where it has, uh, it has not done well. There are some green shoots that we are seeing in IT hiring, but we don't see IT hiring coming back to the levels that we saw in 22 uh, and uh, in 21 and 22, mainly 22. So, uh, therefore, we are diversifying our uh, customer base. We are also now getting into BFSI and some of the other places where employee background verification is also required. Uh, and uh, expanding in those areas. That said, overall matrix, overall matrix did expand at about 18% year on year, which is quite substantial. Right. Yeah, one more thing, just to add on Amitabh, what he said, yeah. uh, you also mentioned on ground handling. Ground handling, we have an absolute kind of a, I mean, uh, monopoly because we have a 10-year concession. Only way, along with us is another uh, Air India, AIT, which is Air India company. Probably we don't see it as a big competition. Otherwise, uh, these uh, airport contracts are for 10 years, all the 32 airports. It's a concession. See, we had commented earlier uh, in the previous uh, uh, quarterly call that uh, we expect global to turn around uh, this year. And um, uh, we are actually quite pleased to report that it has uh, it has done that. And uh, it is now uh, onwards is going to contribute to profitability. So, um, uh, and uh, this is this business had a gestation period the, in some of our airports, the two and a half, three year gestation period is roughly over. And uh, now we see, and now we will see uh, this business contributing more meaningfully to our BSS numbers and therefore also to our overall number. So in ground handling, uh, this gestation period is required for, because we were a new entry or uh, uh, it is required for each and every new airport we enter? No, so, so there are two things, you are right. So the, every, new airport, every new airport that we enter, uh, we have to invest in, uh, in uh, uh, equipment. So uh, like, a, uh, like a ground power unit, there is, a ground, uh, there is an air handling unit, there are what are called pushbacks, there are ladders, uh, there are also you know, the luggage handling unit, uh, etc. So these are all uh, equipment buses, for example, to move the passengers. So all this equipment has to be uh, deployed. 
so that is one that is one aspect of gestation second is that traffic takes time to build up so the investment happens first traffic takes time to build up the third area of gestation is that once you get the concession and your clock starts then the minimum guarantee that you have to pay to the airport that also starts but um, uh, what you know, revenue may take a little time to uh, to build up so these are the three reasons why there is gestation thank you sir very helpful thank you and good luck to you sir thank, thank you. you thank you we have our next question from the line of balaji from iifl so this is my question uh, i have uh, a couple sorry, of questions so can you please be a little louder yeah thanks for taking my question uh, i have a couple of questions the first one is on you know why do you disclose the segmental pdd margin uh i know uh, could you please dis- uh, disclose the segmental ebitda margin for uh, uh, 1q fi 25 for q fi 24 and uh, 1q fi 24 the reason i am asking is you know it uh, uh, gives us a better picture of the underlying momentum of the business so in case you, ha- uh, you have it it would be great if you could share it so you are asking for ebitda margin uh, uh, segmental uh, ones yeah tech of uh, ifm and bss okay for the previous three quarters right. Yeah, okay, uh, Bandaji, the IFM EBITDA in Q4-24 was 5.3 percent. That is in Q1-24, it was 4.9 percent, and now it is 5.7 percent. The BSS okay. the last quarter was 8.8 percent. The last year paying quarter was 9 percent, and now it is 9.9 percent. Okay, that so is uh, quite a clear trend that you are seeing. Uh, in BSS yeah. also, uh, margins are steady, but uh, they are also improving. So now it is 9.9. Both of them have grown, uh, you know, 0.8% over last year's period. Oh, that is uh, quite good, and and it would be, you know, it will, you know, I think it will be uh, great, you know, if you could share this uh, in the quarterly PPT itself going forward, so that you know. Uh, it becomes absolutely clear, and you know, uh, I know this. Uh, we don't have to ask it over a call, uh, so that is quite helpful. Secondly, you know, uh, on the ISM segment, you mentioned you know most of the low margin contracts have uh, already been exited, and uh, growth should improve from here on. Uh, but you know, in general, when I look at uh, your other listed peers, also one can see that the revenue growth has uh, substantially tapered, tapered off. Uh, at least, you know, based on the FNS report, you know, it is uh, supposed to grow at uh, growing teens. But uh, uh, at least, whatever we can see from the listed companies reporting is that uh, it has been in single digits. Uh, so, you know, w- going forward, you know, how do you think? How how, how do you, uh, you know? How long do you think will it take for you to uh, get back to the uh, big double digit kind of number? Thank you. So uh, yeah, Balaji, this year, in spite of that, because most of the uh, unviable contracts we have exited was last year, or maybe a little bit uh, before the first quarter. So this year, I think, uh, not I think, we will decide you what the 14% growth between 13 and 14% growth for this year in the ISM. The second question was uh, industry and bio or ah, yeah, 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 also, in fact, I also read that report. They also they said they are exiting uh, unviable contracts, and they have said that's why their uh, top line did not grow much. Mm-hmm. It was single digit. I think it was six percent or something. But we will do much better. I'm sure we'll do between 13 to 14 percent. If I look at first quarter numbers, it's very good. I think. And normally, uh, you know what? Uh, these uh, iPhone businesses start uh, picking up in the second and third quarter for some reason. Uh, two other uh, things I will just add, Balaji. So, you know, when Raghu used the word, I will guide. I mean, please don't take this in the in the in the term formal guidance. This is not formal guidance, but this is uh, you know, an informal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's uh, you know, yeah. Uh, uh, that that said, uh, the other piece uh, is that see, construction is happening all around us. So, overall, A grade office space is getting added. We do expect that the market will grow, and that there will be, uh, you know, margin improvement as well. Those slow margin improvement will be slower, but volume should come back much faster. Uh, is the uh, is the belief at this point, and we are seeing some of that momentum building up now. 
uh, got it. And just to understand, these low margin contracts were the ones you got into uh, during the pandemic. Uh, uh, is that a fair understanding? Now those contracts are uh, expiring and uh, going forward. Uh, uh, you know the price uh, pricing pressure which we saw should uh, be a lot less. Is that uh, is that a fair understanding? Some may be like that, but not all. Um, because you know some of these are also shorter term contracts, so they may not be three four year contracts. Um, uh, because in the pandemic period was 2021, um, uh, but uh, some of these could also be uh, you know even earlier, for example, or some may have been shorter term contracts that we may have got into slightly later. But uh, uh, so uh, the, see the company strategy strategy is very clear. Strategy is to not spread ourselves too thin. Focus on larger customers. Focus on value added services and therefore improve margins and get steady business improvements. That is the strategy. So therefore, because as you know, uh, that we have almost 1,500 customers. So uh, there is a tail, there is a long tail, and some of these customers become difficult to serve uh, profitably. So the, uh, also the reason is that if they are not strategic, then we will exit them over time. Okay, got it. Th thanks and all the best. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratmesh Divas from Tiger Assets. Please go ahead. <coughs> Mr. Pratmesh, are you there? Mr. Pratmesh? Oh, am I audible? Yeah. Please go ahead with the question. I hope so. So first, uh, how, much, how many are you handling it? Before, I think you are... Oh, uh, sir, you are not really... <laughs> Hello. Yeah. I'm audible now? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. So my first question was on airport side. So in Q4, I think uh, we were handling around 16 airports and more six we were going to add. So as of now, how much is that number? <coughs> we are operating in 22 airports as of now. Okay. And 10 of which we are, you know, fully started uh, building in the last year. Okay, and in coming time, let's say for FY25, how uh, how many more are we planning to add on? At this point of time, there is only one more airport because these were a contract based out of consortium which we won earlier, and with that, we will be done in that. New airports, new airlines will keep coming in. Even now, the same airport, a new airline, one of the largest airlines is talking to us through Ramit. It's an initial stage of negotiation. We can get new avenues of business, a new career to can come into. Okay, and uh, ma'am, if I just missed it earlier, can you give me revenue split in the BSS segment from metrics and other uh, subsidies? Uh, you want the breakup of uh, BSS segment? Yeah. Top line, yeah. I need an NPC, okay. Yeah, ma'am, from BSS segment. Okay, from BSS segment, we have um, A1, which is our logistics uh, transport company, which has 241 million in Q1, which was uh, almost 100% growth over the last quarter. Natural is 315 million, which again is 18% over the last year's same quarter. A global is 119 million. 129% over last quarter, last year's same quarter. Uh, Delay is uh, 1290 million, which is 36% over the last year's same quarter. Again, now 377, which is 4% over the last year's same quarter. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. All the best. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Gwani Shah from Investec. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, just uh, to begin with, within the IFM business, uh, if you check the standalone itself, uh, which you all report, uh, the business advisor revenue has come up. The EBITDA margins, excluding the other income, is at 3.7%. Uh, 
so just wanted to understand what is uh, what is the uh, outlook going forward on this number and as you mentioned uh, ifm at the time i think that 5.7 uh, which i think radha mentioned earlier was this with other income and if you could give the same numbers without other income would be very helpful Sure. That's it. Yeah, we will populate uh, going ahead without other income, and uh, we also given the balance sheet and uh, P and L published. You can even understand uh, just one minute. I will give the other income. Hmm. Uh, so, so the thing is that historically, we were reporting segmental with only other operating income. Now it is with other income. It is actually getting very difficult for us to understand the trend, and the bookkeeping itself is uh, causing us to not get the finer details right. So, if you could please do that, uh, that would be really helpful. And now, if you could just explain the outlook on how the beta margins would look for the standalone business. Okay, the other income we had around uh, 58 million in this Q1 FI train file, and if you are uh, clearly wanting to understand the finance income, which is about 45 million, the 45 million on our um, top line, of, it's about 0.1 percent. How much is it without the other income, the other margin? 45 million is going on. My EBITDA margin is 474. Will become 420. 474 will become 420. So I said 0.5 percent. Yeah. Uh, so going forward, uh, you know, we will do. Uh, we will clearly separate it out. Your idea is uh, right. Uh, including also the, uh, the segmental, uh, you know, another caller had asked for the segmental numbers. Uh, we, will, we will include both of them in our uh, quarterly tech itself, so that we don't have to, uh, you know, uh, try to separate it out. As you rightly pointed out, that the, otherwise then it, it could become slightly difficult. For this year, I mean, for this quarter, Radha has explained that it's about four and a half crores, 45 million, right? Yeah. yeah. Understood. And yeah, just if you could uh, share some light on how exactly is the IFM standalone business panning out, the margin improvement from 1.7 to 3.7 on the quarter to quarter basis looks very uh, looks great. So just on the outlook of that, this I believe is a function of how your low margin contracts are now exited. So just going forward, how, what would it look like? So going forward, we believe that this margin of uh, you know around four four and a half percent um, uh, should easily be uh, but, uh, should be should be there. And uh, in fact, we believe that overall uh, it can be better. Uh, this is on a standalone without other income, without financial income, without anything. Just pure operating income. Correct. So, uh, uh, that, uh, so we do believe that about four and a half to five, even five, is what we would be looking at. But in the near term, you can easily think of about four and a half percent. Understood. And now coming to just the BSS segment. So even in the BSS segment, why the revenue saw a sharp growth? If segmental, excluding all the adjustments that you have mentioned, the EBITDA margin, the PBT margin was a flat or a QOQ. So if you could just explain the growth drivers going forward, and if global flight continues to improve with 6.7 percent, as you all have reported, uh, could it continue increasing? Yes, uh, but global will definitely keep on increasing because the costs are already taken into account. Uh, and uh, a post gestation period, every airport is profitable or will be profitable. So, uh, so global will keep on improving. And uh, that is the trend that we are seeing in almost every business that we have right now. And in any case, Q2 and Q3 are the better quarters. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, because there is festive demand and also festive jobs, uh, that happen. Uh, there are a lot of shorter term projects that come in, uh, and also some other payments that come in at that time. So okay. Q2 and Q3 will anyway be uh, stronger. Okay. And uh, just another uh, last question, if you can. In the iPhone business, a lot of your peers have uh, been stating the fact that the larger customers are seeing uh, lower margins, and with the, would that mean that your incremental our uh, customers are coming at a better gross margin for you? So that is our attempt, that we always, always want to take customers uh, at margins that are accretive, which means higher than our current overall margin. 
uh, for some strategic reasons, uh, you know, for one particular product line, we may offer margins that are lower or pricing that is lower uh, to establish a relationship with some of these customers. But uh, otherwise, the general expectation that you uh, that you are talking about is correct, which is that new customers should come in at a uh, margin which is uh, at where we are or better. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Naman Shah from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Congratulations on the good side of number. I just had one question in the ISM segment. How much of your revenue is from government and how much is from non government? Government is almost zero now. Uh, we buy the government, uh, that's what, almost zero. One two percent, um, uh, and uh, we are almost hundred percent private sector. So, uh, just wanted to understand. Uh, having the government uh, contract doesn't doesn't it make three four years of stable revenue for you? Sorry, I I didn't get you. Uh, yeah, so if you have a government contract, that means you you bid through, you are in the bidding process, and if you bid and win, you have three four years of stable income, correct? That is correct, but uh, government business comes with its own set of complications. Uh, you know, in terms of penalties, in terms of the payment cycles, sometimes the DSOs can be above six months, uh, and uh, there are other issues. So therefore, uh, uh, you know, our attempt uh, has been. It, it's not that we are saying we will never do government business, but uh, uh, extremely selective, and uh, right now very very low exposure to those kinds of contracts. And uh, it's unlikely that we will uh, that this will become very large for us. Okay, that's my only question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akshat Bharti from RSBN Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for taking my question. So, sir, I'm new to this company and want to understand a bit about the ISM business. So we have a lot of segments uh, in the ISM business. So can you uh, share what is the major segment like from where does most of the revenue comes from the ISM segment? So ISM basically comprises soft services, which is uh, cleaning services by and large. Uh, it comprises engineering services, which is uh, uh, you know, a fairly large part of our, uh, of our business. Uh, the third major one where we are very strong is production support services, CSS. This is where uh, you know we support uh, industries on their industrial plants, uh, on their manufacturing lines, etc., doing O&M and other such services. So that's the third large one. And then you have institutional catering, uh, uh, which is uh, also growing very well. Uh, uh, and we're very strong in the south, so that's a big one. And then what we have is a warehouse management, uh, which is not very large for us, but uh, we see growth over there later. And uh, also there is a, a very specialized company that we have called Washroom Hygiene, uh, where we uh, where we provide services for safe and environmentally friendly friendly disposal of used sanitary napkins. So uh, that's a high margin business for us. So uh, those are the six segments that we have in this space. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, can you quantify what percentage of revenue comes from these segments? So we don't quite, uh, you know, break it up like that. But I can give you some very, very broad numbers. Uh, uh, so uh, you will have uh, staffing at about 10% or less. Uh, you will have institutional catering at about 10%, uh, or maybe slightly less than that. Uh, uh, engineering services uh, and soft services would be about 30%. Uh, each soft would be about 40. Engineering would be about 25, say, so that would be about 65. And uh, uh, production support services will also be about 15, uh, about 15 or 20, 20. So uh, washroom hygiene is a very small business. Washroom hygiene is a very small revenue business, but strong if it does, 40% if it does. Got it, got it. Thank you so much. Uh, so my second question will be, you stated that we are number two or number three uh, in the market share uh, in most of our segments. So, sir, yeah. uh, what, is, what is something that we do different from your peers uh, to have that kind of market share? 
So I think of uh, the uh, yeah, but it's uh, we have over the years the one of the strongest pieces really uh, is our customer relationships and our customer management. So, but because we deliver services which are reliable and we deliver services which are as per the customer's expectation, that's where the relationship exists. Most of our new business also comes from existing customers. So that is a measure of the satisfaction that they derive from what we have done for them. So if somebody, if you're already doing business with them, say in, in plant A or in factory one, then they will take us to factory two, three, four, and five. So that is the kind of thing that we have seen. So one is the quality, quality of services delivered, quality of relationship that we have with them. We are also bringing in technology in various parts of what we do. So that is helping uh, very clearly. So that I would say would be the third. And uh, uh, the last to, to, a, to, a, to an extent is uh, really the bouquet of services that we have. So we have a full range of services which, uh, which is helpful um, uh, in the customer because most customers are not consolidating the vendors that they have. And they want to deal with larger vendors who are more compliant and UDS being listed has very strong credentials in that. So that helps. So the reputation that UDS has uh, because of the fact now also that it is listed and we've been in the market for 30 years, that has been uh, very, very helpful uh, as well. So those will be the three or four core trends. The fact that we've been there, reputation, the fact that we understand the business and have delivered services for them, the fact that we have a full bouquet of services, and the fact that we have people who have been with the company for a long time, churn is low at our site management level, and therefore we have strong relationships. Got it, got it, sir. Thank you. And sir, my last, last question is any guidance uh, for FY25 on a consolidated level? Uh, no, uh, we don't yet give formal guidance. So uh, that we are not, uh, we, are, we are not giving out a, 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 or putting out a formal guidance. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. And so just one last bookkeeping question. Uh, sir, what will be the tax rate going uh, for FY25? So our tax rate roughly is about 15% and um, uh, we expect uh, uh, we are 24 is about 16, yeah, yeah. So we're looking about 15, 16, yeah, about 15, 16 percent. Um, uh, and the thing to note over there is that we are not dependent on ATJJ. Uh, uh, so that is something for you to keep in mind. Uh, uh, oh. So our, uh, yeah, so we are not really dependent on that. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for taking my question and all this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranam, Sh Pranam Shimal from Pink Wealth Advisory. Please go ahead. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I had a little question. Uh, I just want to understand in our sales and business, business, uh, what exactly is the service that we offer? And uh, going forward, how do you see the market growing for it? You're talking about BFS? Yeah, in the sales uh, enablement sector, that is our uh, Denovi and the Athena software. I want to understand how does it function exactly? Yeah, so Denovi is basically sales enablement. Athena is also yeah. sales enablement. Sales enablement basically means that we help our customers sell more. So uh, uh, we have a digital uh, uh, business uh, where we help them sell more digitally. We also help them generate leads and close sales also or pass on the leads to them and uh, we get paid for that. So this is done through uh, a lot of digital work. Uh, it is also done through other campaigns that are run. Uh, and it also, uh, they also do a lot of uh, market activation activity, uh, uh, which is on the ground. So they are the three or four areas uh, where they work. So there is market activation, there is tele-sales, which is the lead part of it, and there is digital, primarily these three. And uh, so are these businesses right now, are they uh, profitable for us? And yes. have we recovered the cost of all of them profitable? All, and uh, what will be the revenue, uh, and the revenue contribution from this business? Uh, we don't break it up like that. Um, uh, you know, so, uh, so I will not be able to give you a revenue or any better break up at that level. But uh, at the legal entity level for Dinev and for the others, uh, uh, we have actually already given it in a previous uh, uh, but, 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 but we will just together it is about 36 uh, percent is uh, the BSL segment. Dinev as is a global as uh, 
and the margin was what? Uh, Tenor is about seven and a half percent, and nothing else goes to the So totally we uh, we read out. Yeah, we have given nine point nine. Yeah, nine point nine percent. So P S S over. I thought you wanted to. Could you repeat the last slide? Yeah. Uh, could you please repeat what uh, the last slide? For P S S, the margin yeah. number is nine point nine percent. Uh, but be, uh, below the below that line, we don't give product-wise breakups. But uh, uh, the, uh, but the overall segment of DSS is delivering 9.9 percent EBITDA. Ah ah, okay, got it. And do we going forward? Do we see any expansion, or uh, is it going to be around the seven for a while? No, so we do expect margins to improve uh, as the revenue grows. There is cost arbitrage as well that kicks in. So margins will definitely improve. But uh, we have already guided in the past that, or we have mentioned in the past that margin improvement in this business is on cost, cost arbitrage basis, not on price. So uh, we will grow at about 0.2, 0.3% year on year as far as margin is concerned. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, sir. Best of luck. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of. Pratish from Lucky Investment, please go ahead. Sir, uh, could you give uh, any indication on the EBITDA growth that you're looking at uh, for the next couple of years? And second, in terms of your business, new business pipeline, any comments that you want to share? So new business pipeline, uh, you know, because since we are in different kinds of businesses, uh, the pipelines look different for the different businesses. But uh, uh, as far as revenue is concerned, uh, uh, rather overall, I think uh, what we have actually earlier also commented was uh, we are looking at a 15-16 percent consol all businesses put together. That's the growth we are looking at. Yeah. Earlier you were calling out plus 20 percent. So any change by with respect to that? So we may well be closer to that as well, but uh, we don't believe in you know over promising and then under delivering. But uh, the thing because there have been headwinds, and uh, we had mentioned that in the last quarterly call also, uh, there are headwinds uh, you know in the EBGC business for example, uh, where clearly we are seeing uncertainty around IT hiring and therefore a slowdown in that business. And uh, we had talked about the fact that uh, to counter that to some extent global will improve, which it has. Uh, and our AA business, audit and assurance business, is growing strongly. But uh, since we do see weakness in EBGC, uh, and we do see some weakness in uh, in uh, some of our other businesses, uh, therefore we are right. Therefore we are mentioning 15, 16 percent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Rahil Shah from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Um, the previous call about the IFM business, you had mentioned that you know um, more and more projects that like you're receiving uh, already, and once you stabilize, you will see higher throughput. So, is this happening now? Um, what is the situation? So, uh, is this happening in the sense? I mean, that is what we are working on. That I think, uh, if you look at this quarter numbers, also you would see a slight improvement uh, over last quarter. So that is what is happening. It will increase. Okay. Is that uh, yeah. the question? Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, what was your ESOP cost for the quarter, and what will it be for the year? ESOP cost, what was last year, eight crores. So, yeah, yeah. the whole uh, the ESOP cost for this particular period is how much? Uh, last year it was about uh, nine million for this quarter. Okay, so full uh, the full year we are expecting it to be around five crores. Yeah, five crores full year, and this quarter is about uh, one point one crores. One point five crores. Last year, last year, quarter one and five crores full year. Yeah, that is. But last year it was eight crores, so that keeps reducing because uh, the next team before that, uh, the if next year it gets over, I think. Right? One more year. One more year, yeah, very small at least. So this year will be fine. That's your answer for that question. Right, right. Okay. And just to reconfirm, I believe you said for the BSS segment, 
um, you expect margins to grow 0.2 percent every year. Yeah, or yeah, roughly around overall margins. Yeah, yeah, overall. Console margins. Console margins, not just BSS. No, no. Console no. margins will grow within point two to point three. Right, right. Got it. Okay, okay sir. Thank you. All the best. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Heath Vora from Guardian Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. I just had one question. I just want some clarification with respect to the investment that we've made in Winvi technology. So we've done a right issue of uh, 7.9 crores. I just wanted to understand, given this is a loss-making business, why has this happened and we've given up further loan? And secondly, uh, could you just give some uh, information around why we've done this scheme of merger also with uh, ITSS? Okay, uh, see, this is, uh, you know, the, it's a scheme of amalgamation between ITSS and Winway. Uh, Winway, at this point of time, having a network which is negative, and we want to go under Section 233, fast track merger. Uh, UDS has given a loan already to Winway, which was provided and inspired in UDS book. So we now have uh, given them a little more money to increase the network to be positive. And of course, that money has come back. The loan has got repaid to us back. So cash terms, there's no impact for UDS. The money went as a right issue, and the money came back as a loan repayment. And this merger is necessary for us because ITSS is also invested in a technology company, and Winway is a technology company. Strategically, if we merge these two companies, we'll have a lot of synergy. Especially on the go-to market, because ITSS has a go-to market already in place. Winway. There's no point in investing new money to get them to create another go-to market. Uh, ITS has already had that. Got it. Understood. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Manu Jaitwa from KSA Shares and Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon and uh, good set of numbers which you have given for Q1 FI25. My question is there on the BSS side. This is regarding the field market service, field marketing services, which we are doing for one uh, prestigious mobile manufacturer in India. So maybe have some any sort of numbers, how much revenue we could have it in couple of quarters or for the FI25. Yeah, the last quarter we reported um, close to 40 crore of revenue in Delhi which has come out of this uh, new initiative, which they are running the retail stores. It's um, not just running it, enabling the sales, converting it. It's a comprehensive solution which we are providing to the largest mobile manufacturers. Maybe have, maybe have the name of that particular manufacturer and how big is the contract? We cannot share that unless we get the approval from the manufacturer at this point of time. Also, that's competitive information. Uh, so, we will not be able to share the exact name, but uh, you know, there aren't that many who are that large. So, you can understand. You can draw your own conclusions also. And my another question is there uh, if uh, company is harping more on the technological and digital use of providing all the services. Uh, are we moving away from the, you know, uh, mass scale of people labor deployment to smart solutions for the technology enablement uh, for the uh, providing services in the BSS or the ISM segment? And how it could be EBITDA and uh, margin attributive to the businesses at large? So there are two parts to that question. Uh, uh, one is that uh, you know, are we moving away from people intensive and more into technology? Yes, 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 yes. We are certainly examining all types of technology, uh, but these are mostly inward looking in the sense that they will help transform internal productivity uh, and efficiency. So for, and it will improve, help improve customer uh, you know, uh, interactions. The, uh, in some businesses like Dinev and uh, and Matrix, uh, Dinev in particular, uh, it could also result in some new services getting created. But uh, will we reduce our dependence on people? See, uh, at this point in time, hard to comment. But we certainly expect that it will add to productivity. So but that might mean uh, a few jobs getting relocated uh, or uh, you know people being redeployed to some other areas. <coughs> 
So my another one question for you, with your kind permission, would be the opportunity with the BSS has uh, in the Korean market, and how much revenue we would be doing right now under that segment? So not much. Uh, it's not a reportable number. Uh, it's not that large. Uh, and uh, but the idea is that it, com it complements our Asia offering because there are global customers who want services in various countries. So uh, it will not be a material number in the near future. But Korea is a large market, and uh, you know in the future, two to three years down the line, it could be a significant revenue and a bit of Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all from my side, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. And I would now like to hand the conference over to management for the comments. Thank you. Okay. Uh, fine, I didn't know you were waiting for my time. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. I hope we have been able to answer all your queries. We look forward to such interactions in the future. In case you require any further details, you may contact us or Mr. Devan of HGA in this relationship by Thank you, Mr. Devan. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. On behalf of Updater Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. And you can now disconnect your lines.